What's up guys, welcome to Winners on a Wednesday where we interview success stories, success students every single week and this week I'm privileged to bring Ben and Abby onto the show. They came to the crash course, they're doing deal packaging, they've done rent to service accommodation, they've refurbished, refinanced a property and they're absolutely killing it and they've both quit their jobs and are now financially free. So Ben and Abby, welcome to the show. Great to be here. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, definitely. I know um, you've been wanting to come on Winners Wednesday for so long, but you've been, you've been holding off until you've got a really good story. Yeah. So um, why, don't you, why don't you guys give me a little bit of background as into, because I did a post on Facebook and said, um, what do people want to see on Winners Wednesday? And they said, we want to see stories. We want to see things that go wrong. I know you've had things go wrong. Yeah. Um, and, we want, and we want some real facts and figures and stuff. So why don't you guys kick off by giving us a bit of background to this, your story. Cool. Um, so for me personally, I always wanted to have like a normal life because when I was um, nine, I got diagnosed with a brain tumour. So I've had brain surgery twice and had hospital treatments and I had a great childhood, but I always had this going on. So I just kind of wanted a normal life. I wanted to buy a house, settle down, get married and have 2.4 children. And that was like my life plan. Yeah. Met Ben, thought this is on track, we're doing great. And then I had everything, we, we bought a nice house, we'd settled down, we were going to get married, and I got depression. So everything was perfect around me, but I didn't feel happy, mm. and I don't, it, it just came out of nowhere, I don't even know why it happened. I had the worst like nine months of my life, couldn't work for a few months as well. So when we got through all of that, Ben had been wanting to go on this crash course, I and mean, been talking mm. about this Samuel guy, he made me read a book, and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I just want to get married and have babies. Yeah. Anyway, finally got me to go to a crash course. And at this point, what, you were depressed? I was still struggling with anxiety yeah. and depression. And you guys got together, you wanted to get into property and stuff, but Abby was feeling really, oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah. What, what was it, Ben, that, ha I mean, what was it that made you want to come to the crash course and get into property? It was just you, you seen, I've always been interested in property, and you said we did our buy, refurb, refinance, that was before I knew of you and your strategy, but it's just, obviously I've always been clued up with like, construction side of the of things all my mates are like do trades and stuff and yeah we, we'd, had, we'd had this we knew we had equity in the house from doing it up and but i didn't know what to do with it so. so you were thinking you could refinance the house and do something with it how would you have felt about that at the time oh well, we i just couldn't be bothered we yeah we didn't, really like think about, <laughs> we didn't really think about the refinance and pulling the money out it was just oh because everyone just sort of says Hi, I have equity in my house, and that's like a real, my, my dad said to me one of his tips that really wasn't a good tip at all. So pay your mortgage, like you said, pay your mortgage off as fast as you can. Yeah. Even if you haven't. And look forward to retirement. Yeah. But well, that all changed yeah. as soon as we went on the crash course. So I was, so I was there. I, 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 most people find you, I think, through YouTube. And I was searching and yeah, how to be. There's all these people that baffle you with all the maths, and you thinking that looks complicated. Then you come along and all of a sudden it looks doable. Yeah, because property is not that difficult really, is it? It's quite simple. Yeah. Um, so you came to the crash course and then what happened? It changed our lives. Like we went into it, I'd got on board because I'd read your book and looked at your YouTube mm -hmm. and sort of things. It sounded good, but I thought, well, we'll do it as like a side project, you know, but maybe something we can do in the future. Yeah. But then we came out of the first day like, oh my God, we've got to quit our jobs. We've got to make a business. We've got to do all these things and take action on everything. Yeah. Sign up to the academy, literally this is it. New path, what wedding, what kids, this was it. And yeah. it just changed completely. That's everything. crazy that you came, and, and, and Abby, you guys were working full time at the time, yeah. and I remember when we met at the crash course and we were speaking, and you, I remember you saying, Abby, you went, I just hate my job. Yeah. Can I say something on that? Because that, this is one thing I wanted to say, and at that time, just Abby even like turning up to a busy event, it was a big, big thing. Yeah. Because I mean, like I say with the depression, it was more anxiety, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and just from you, like the inspiration from you, it's like saying, get out of your comfort zone, play at level 10. I was looking at Abby and I was thinking, no way she stood up. <laughs> yeah. Because I stood all up and answered the question and, and yeah, spoke to you with the microphone and he was just like tearing up going, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> That's a, it's a big deal though. Yeah. It's yeah. a massive deal. And obviously you, you know, you desired something something great to happen in your life but it's, it's incredible and, and that's why we, we run these programs that's why i run the crash course yeah. um so okay so you came to the crash course and you realized that you wanted to get into property you what were you doing what jobs were you both doing 
So I'm a nurse, which I absolutely love being a nurse, but the job I've ended up in was kind of a nine to five more admin office-based yes. nursing, and I really didn't like it at it's all. Not traditional nursing. Yeah, the money was was great, but it was not a proper nurse. And yeah. I didn't like doing that. Yeah. So now that I can. Be, be financially free I'd like to go back into proper nursing more okay interesting days. because you can right a choice I remember when you joined the academy you, you were you were working as an uh, doing admin stuff at, yeah. in, in, at that what were you doing I was I was working for a company basically just service and repair and boilers which like it was I liked the job because it wasn't like traditional city boilers it was farms and yeah. agricultural side of it, so yeah. we're working like oil boilers, big oil industry. But I remember having a conversation with you guys, it must have only been about four or five months ago, and you were like, okay, now we're in property, we're, in the, we're on the academy, we've done the crash course, and I remember you saying, once we've got a few deals, who should quit their job first? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, and it was in the sort of, we saw in that situation, like mine, it's like it's, the company I worked for was so relaxed and like, you could literally say, I need a day off next week, and be like, I'll just work a good job in that. <laughs> yeah. But it was like me, I could give two weeks notice and be gone. Abby, yours like more three, three months. months. So, so you both. Who was gonna leave and, first. and since then, you've both quit your jobs. Yeah. How did that happen? How did you end up quitting your jobs? I mean, what was your strategy? You didn't have a big pot of money, you had a little bit of equity in your house. Yeah. T tell, us, tell us what happened. Tell us the story. It was a bit of a, a, bit of a leap of faith, really. You sort of yeah. trusted you. <laughs> Although I'm always really careful, of I'm always really careful because when people say to me, "Should I quit my job?" Yeah. I don't want to say, do. "Yeah, quit your job," and then they quit it, and then I'm thinking, "Geez, now they're now they're on the streets." <laughs> so I'm always I've got to be really careful because I don't want to be responsible for that. Yeah. But t t t talk about our conversation. Well, I, I'd already made my mind up, so I was I, I think it was the day I wouldn't let you quit your job yeah, for ages. Yeah. It was the day as soon as because we went on Alistair's course. Yeah. And after that, I was thinking, yeah, we can definitely do this. Um, and then he said, he was obviously became our mentor as well. So I was thinking, we, we literally can't fail. In my head, we can't fail. Yeah. I wasn't going to let it fail. But you just um, wanted Samuel to say, yes, that's fine. But I wouldn't yeah. say it. Yeah, because yeah, so I, I messaged Samuel on Facebook and I said, look, I, I have been stupid here, am I? Like, it is. Is it okay if just, I quit my just job? Basically, just, <laughs> You're that one person. If you say no, that's it. I think mean, you did. You did say I can't. I can't recommend you do anything. Yeah. And I sort of came back to and said, but you know, they tried to convince you sold, to convince me. We'd sold so many deals to Alistair at that point, so you said that, and then you changed your mind. I just went. You know what, Ben? Just quit. Just yeah. quit. Yeah, just do it. And then I was, it was just. Great. So it was, it was deal, it was, because I know on the academy, uh, you did some training with Alistair, yeah. and it was, it was deal packaging, wasn't it? Yeah. That enabled you to originally quit your job. So talk to me about that then, Ben. So how did you go from not knowing anything about property to now knowing so much that people are paying you to find them deals? Yeah. What did that look like? As we know, I, I sort of did know about property anyway. I've, I've been in construction, so I sort of know, like, um, Obviously, I know if it's a good boiler. And I, I, like when I'm viewing properties, I check the boiler because that's what I specialised in. Yes. So I, I check out as quick as I can, but I, don't, I didn't know like structural things on damp. But the training you get, especially like Trevor, Trevor has helped me out massively with the looking for issues. And yeah. Recommended a book and stuff like that to read. Um, and yeah, it, it, from going from not, well, nothing to that, it, it's just the training, really. So you went on the training, and what did you learn on the training? What are the key skills that you learned that enabled you to make money as a deal packager? You, you've got to know what people are looking for, what sells. Yeah. And obviously, with a 20% return on investment, that, that's what people are looking for. And if you can get that, it's what it's So you've been basically trying to find houses that are cheap, knocking them down on price, getting a really good deal that's yeah. going to rent out well, yeah. presenting all the data, yeah. presenting, you know, how, what the letting agents are saying, what rents you're going to get. Exactly. All that sort of stuff. And then people will say, you know what, that's a great house. And they'll pay you yeah. to, 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 to basically be introduced to that deal. Is, is that right? Yeah. Well, and just having good contacts, you know, making sure the information that you're getting is correct. Yeah. Being put in touch with the right people, speaking to the right people has been really useful. And one thing I, I can say I did learn and have learned is when we, I remember when we bought our house originally, we was definitely motivated by it. Oh, okay. Definitely. Yeah. And it was that uh, last and final offer. It was oh my God, mind game started kicking in. We really wanted it. We paid up. Probably the odds. Well. Still, <laughs> still made money on it. Yeah. And what what we've learned through like the deal packaging is not to be motivated by it. Just you put loads of offers in at what you think you'd stack up. If you don't accept it, 
that's it. Yeah. You know, the, I've had one, I offered a silly amount. I think it was, I, it was on for like 120, well over price. So I put, I put an offer in what it would work to be the ROI that would sell. Um, and they said, no, no way. Uh, I think it, like, it must be like three months later, they got back to me and said, we haven't even had any more offers. Would you be interested? Yeah. And that's when I thought, I thought, hmm, they sound desperate here. So yeah. <laughs> so no, I'm not, not interested. Um, that's 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 my offer. I think I put in like seventy five. Seventy five. Wow! It's on at one twenty, and you offered seventy five. Yeah, but it won't, won't, it won't worth one twenty. No. For training, I knew it wasn't worth yeah. one twenty. Because asking price and market value are two different things. Yeah, I knew I knew in the condition it was, it probably worth like one hundred and five. Yeah. But they were they were coming to me at, at like ninety ninety five and saying, look, please just give us another <laughs> offer. So they yeah. Back to me, I thought, all right, all right. So you're desperate, right? I'll offer a bit less. Then I said, nice. No, I worked out the refurb because I didn't put that much time into working out the refurb. So I actually worked out the refurb, and because of the damp issues and it's sort of a few issues, mm. I got them down to seventy five. We got the offer accepted, and that was one of the deals we put through our mail. That's process. fantastic. So I mean, if you've if you've got a property and you've agreed, I got an agreed price of seventy five, and it's worth a hundred or more, then. People are gonna pay, you know, know. several thousand pounds for that deal. As long as you can demonstrate that it really, that this is the true market value and this is what I've got it for, you know. What, what would you say to people that said that you're taking advantage of the of the sellers? They're a desperate person in a desperate situation, and you're coming in on cutthroat, you know, offering a really. Do, do you not think that's a little bit, a bit unethical? No, no, I don't, because they've come to me. They've come to me again and asked me for, if I don't. I'm not, they have an option to accept it or not. Yeah. It's their option to accept it or not. That's true. Um, and we are helping them by actually buying, you know, finding someone to buy it for them. Yeah, yeah, Without okay. Without then they wouldn't have anyone to buy it and they'd still be in the same situation. Yeah, That's they're, true. They're, obviously they've got the right room, but we, if, if people, like we're obviously, people trust us now to find these deals. So we've got, what, what is it, like over 800 now investors. And we'll get to that in a minute as well. And we it's valuable for them because we just we can have a look at it and if, if it works for us it'll work for our investors so yes I, I see it as we're helping them more than anything. you're helping the person sell yeah you're then finding an investor that yeah. wants a good deal you're bringing the two together and you're charging a fee yeah. that's fantastic H how do you find the investor because i know you guys that was your big problem to begin with and we, we were helping you and we, you were passing deals through alistair as part of the academy but now you know, I know you've been on some of the training that we've put on yeah. through the academy. What have you learned that's enabled you to get such a, because you've got how many? Just over 800. 800 hot investors on your mailing list, ready to buy. That's an incredible amount of investors that you've built up over the last few months. How, how have you done that? I've done obviously a lot of networking, coming to events, um, speaking to people, telling everyone what we're doing mm. um, and putting out on social media. We get a lot of people sending messages to us, <coughs> asking us what we're doing, asking yeah. if we do this sort of thing, that sort of thing. And, just um, building our brand and you've yeah. helped us do that. And yeah. Just, yeah. Even just being associated with you, it helps because people obviously <laughs> massively trust you. Yeah. yeah. And being part of the academy, you're, also, you're automatically like one step almost yeah above sure people. not above everybody else i don't ever think of myself like that but in knowledge yeah because you've had the trade and you've paid you serious you've paid your money and if people yeah if people know that you're an academy member obviously and also other academy members there were some people on the academy that i know now are happy to pay you to find the deals yeah. just because they haven't got the, they've got a lot of money yeah. they've got the knowledge yeah. but they'd rather you find the deals because they haven't got the time yeah, yeah, because I think at the start, it, like you say, it was it, difficult at the start because you, you haven't done your first deal. So I've been on the academy; it helped us because we could we could say, "Oh, we've, we've sold three. Yeah. But really, we haven't sold it. We sourced it and sold it through Alistair. Yeah. But you could say, "Oh, we sold three, and that gives it a bit more credibility. Yeah. And then when you when you finally get some sales through yours, then people. People say, oh, they Yeah, yeah. and just recommendations. Then, and a lot of people do that on the academy. They'll we call it co-deal sourcing, mm -hmm. where you'll find the deal, but because you haven't got any investors and you might not be compliant or whatever yeah. to begin with, your first two or three you'll pass through at another sourcer, and then you'll work out some kind of commission split. Yeah. yeah, and that's what a lot of academy members do to begin with in their early days. You're now selling your own properties, yeah. which is incredible. Now I know you've done. You've also had. Um, talk to me about your. 
refurb, refinance deal, which was your own house. How, how did that pan out? Yeah, well, we obviously we paid, I reckon, I think we could have paid a bit less for it because obviously with the motivated buyer yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. We bought like it. like 10k over the asking price. And I didn't even view it to be honest, that was you. Yeah. I, 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 knew, I knew we just wanted an absolute wreck and this fitted, it fit the criteria yeah. and I said, because I was busy working and Abby viewed it and she just sort of said, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. awful, there's a dead bird on the windowsill, but sure, <laughs> yeah. let's live there. <laughs> no, and I knew, obviously I knew what I wanted to do. As soon as I viewed it, I knew exactly which walls we were going to build, which walls were going to come down. The boiler was just no question. Was going to get how much did you buy it for? Uh, 205. 205. And how much did you spend on it? About. Just over 15, 20. It was just over twenty because I had it all in there. But that's included all the furniture. Oh yeah, furniture. So. Okay. Yeah. So you took, so you bought it for two hundred five. You spent twenty. So all together you put down about two two five. And then how much did you revalue it at? Two sixty. Two sixty. Nice one. So you pulled out a large sum. Five. Fifty five thousand pounds, which I is. I genuinely think it's gone up in value again. Really. Honestly, it's, it, honestly the house on the for sale. I know it hasn't sold yet. Um, but it's for sale on the same street for three sixty now. Oh my so goodness! Loft extension. So yeah. If you can make a, I'd put a loft extension for another hundred k. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible, though. That's, and 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 you you didn't you weren't really aware of this until what they told the crash course. Yeah. We never even not thought about getting any money. Yeah, not the depth. It's so, you, so, your knowledge is you just exploded. With, yeah. You just the amount the stuff you learn on crash course is just. You just, you just wouldn't ever think it was possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah. With, like I say, you don't have to do it all, you just have to know how to do it all. Yeah. Like, we haven't done any lease options, but we would. Like that one at 75k I was talking about. Yeah. I, I said to the, to, the, to the vendor, look, I'll try and sell it for you. You know, it's all in options. But if I can't sell it, I may be able to offer you something else. And I said that to her and mm. I said, okay, well, we'll see if we can get it sold. And if not, we'll go to that. So if that fails, I had another. <laughs> Wow. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you know all the different strategies, you know how to do lease option agreements, rent to rent, service to accommodation, HMOs, below market value, buy and refinance, you've got all the strategies. What happens is you become, you become this fountain and you can have all these little strategies up your sleeve and be a property problem solver and yeah. stand in front of people who are motivated to sell and say, how can I help? Yeah. Which is, I know you, you've, done, you've done, you've got three rent to rent deals. Yeah. How much are your rent to rent deals roughly going to be bringing in over the on average per month? Um, about two thousand over the year. Two thousand over two thousand a month per, though. Per month, yeah. Ah, okay, not two thousand a year. Yeah, yeah. Average, because yeah. because because they're serviced accommodation, so some yeah. months will be amazing, some months obviously not so great. Yeah. But so so twenty four grand a year. Uh, approximately on your rent to service accommodation, which that's is like your wage replaced. that's your wage replaced, <laughs> that's, and then with yeah. the deal packaging, how much, um, how much money are you making on average? Like, say, if you made over the last couple of months doing deal packaging, um, we've sold twelve and a half thousand pound of deals in the last six weeks, so wow, that two thousand a week. Yeah, that's my rate for place. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's fantastic. And um, I know you've had with the deal packaging, um, it wasn't all smooth sailing at the first. Now you guys are now professional, you're, and that's why you sell so many deals. You're um, you've got a really good reputation. Tell us some of the struggles and problems that you had in the early days. Well, we sold quite a few deals in our first like, six weeks of being up and running as our own business. And they all they all fell through. There was like six deals in six weeks that all fell through for various reasons. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it was just being unlucky. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one. We had uh, a block of flats and we was we was over the moon. Um, landlord said, "Yep, yeah, it works. He's checked the lease for rent to us for short stay." This was a rent to SA. It was. Yeah, yeah. and um, the agent said, "Yep, yeah, it's fine." So we then put it out to our investors after doing all the paper and worked out the numbers. We, we sold them deals. So we had their money in our account, in our client account, and then I had a phone call from the agent. He said, she says, oh, we've, it, it's definitely not true. So she came back to me and said, oh, actually, because I wanted, after I was selling it, I said, because I was waiting for it in writing, I wanted the lease to read it myself without taking their word for it. So I said, well, when's it coming? I've sort of actually got the money in the account now. And then she said, a day later, oh, I've just had it checked by a solicitor and it doesn't, and it doesn't allow for short stay now. Um, so the deals are void now. So 
I almost feel like it gives you more credibility from refunding because then. Mm. So what do you? Do? So presume, what did you do that in that instance? We just refunded. So we rang our investors, apologised, obviously spoke to the agents, kind of straightened things out, um, and then just gave them full refund. Well, we did offer, actually offer one of the investors wanted a replacement property, didn't they? Yeah. Um, sure. I think the thing is when you're deal packaging, it's not about. It, if there's a problem that comes up, it doesn't matter too much. It's about how you deal with that. Yeah. And the, the thing is, you're on the academy, and, and every single problem that happened in the early days, I know there was a few, and you were really disappointed in the early days. Yeah. And I remember yeah. you saying, is, is this normal? Yeah. And, and, and we said, well, you know, not totally. It does happen. Yeah. It's happening a lot. But, you know, you refunded the investors, you looked after them, or you re found them a replacement. Yeah. Um, and because of that, they then bought again. Yeah, I think it's important for people, especially people who are watching this, to know it's not smooth sailing. Because mm. I think 90% of people, maybe not 90, but you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get these setbacks and they'll be like, it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. But we must, we've had a lot of setbacks, but we've, all, we've always carried on. And yeah. Just having you come, come to you for advice and give us a bit, a bit more advice than we have, and we go and then do it. It's building up your that. reputation and your list and. Like, like you say, if, if things go wrong, how you deal with it? We just, we just refund it. We're not out to steal people's money, and I think when, that's a big thing about sources is the trust. Yeah. So if they, we, if they know they can trust us, they're going to work with us. Yeah. And all our investors that we've sold, they, they all trust us. So there's nothing to worry. And about. they know that if something goes wrong, which it can, we're not, we're you're, not gonna, 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 you're gonna refund them, or you're gonna yeah. ask them what you want to. You're gonna sort it out. Yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. I remember the first time we did get a problem, I think it's because we originally thought we were going to buy something and there was a mortgage issue, and I remember saying to you, this is good, we, we knew this isn't going to be massively easy, so it, the mm. first problem we've come to, I thought, this is brilliant, yes. because it means we've got to our first problem, that means we can move on and learn from it, yeah. so I did think it was a good thing. And, and have you learned a lot from, from those days? Yeah, yeah. Huge. And, and now, it doesn't seem to be happening so much now though, you yeah. seem to be on, luck is on your side at the moment. Uh, I'll tell you what, another thing that you've helped us with, the sales. Oh yeah, 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 go on, tell us. So we was firing the deals, but I just, we couldn't work out where it was going wrong. And we are on the academy dinner, I said, we, you were wondering how it was getting on. Because you were finding the best deals, yeah. the best deals. And you also had a, you, a growing list of investors. Yeah. But when you would email it out, people would respond, but you just couldn't get people's money in your bank. Everyone was wanting yeah. to think about it, and everyone was saying, oh, I'll get back to them, never get back. And yeah. I thought, well, we've got like the worst investors list ever. <laughs> yeah. It, it you said it was to you. Us, it was, yeah, it was what I was saying. And then I told you, I was on the phone to, was, how long was it, about an hour? Yeah. Maybe even longer. An hour and a half to one investor, and I wasn't even talking about a deal. Yeah. So it's, it's all about the closing of the deal, and you yes. can talk to that. And, uh, yeah, you need to close. Yeah. yeah Here's what you need to do, and this is what I taught you. You need to find pre pre qualify the investor. Yeah. Rather than the investor coming to you with a million questions, yeah. you send the deal details out, and then the investor comes to you, and you go, "Well, hold on, let me just." And you pre qualify them. Yeah. If the investor fits, the house fits, then you're just going to ask them, "Great." How would you like to pay? Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> yeah you know, it's, it's a two thousand pound finder's fee to re, to secure your pro pro property. How would you like to pay that? I think I was quite skeptical about the service, the fee, and things like feeling like I didn't deserve that money. Yeah. And um, so now believing in my own product, you've taught me how it is a good service. You yeah. are saving someone time and time's money, and yeah. they are good deals. That makes me feel more confident in putting yeah. the fee in and taking someone's money. Was, You're doing was, something good for them. Yeah, from your point of view, it was just me bringing a deal and saying, oh, this one's good, sending it out to investors. She was like, how long did it find you? Just, how long did it take to find that deal? So we was looking at that deal. All right, yeah, I viewed it. Oh, an hour there, an hour back, then offers it. Maybe it was maybe like five, five hours for that deal. She's thinking, she's adding that up, five, so that's what. Per hour, too much per hour, too much per hour. Much per hour. <laughs> but then she doesn't take into consideration the hundreds of hundreds of properties that I've been to. The and also the amount that you've invested. And not, so, and not, not, they didn't work out. Yeah. And the amount of money that you've invested in your education. Yeah. Yes. Because that's another reason you'd use a sort of lack of knowledge and, and yeah. the time. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And yeah, now, now I feel confident that we are providing a good service that yeah. people would want to pay for. So that helps. And uh, would you say your your self worth has now gone up? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And my confidence. Yeah. Because I, I didn't even know some of the stuff you said on this. Like you, you, you guys. I mean, Abby, you're so confident. You know, you're on. You've just been on stage. Yeah. 
<laughs> at this event, sharing your story and stuff. Yeah. And it's, just, it's just absolutely fantastic. Would you say that the um, property has changed your life? A hundred percent. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's just gives us, I, I've always been one for like pretty relaxed and I've yeah. always been relaxed and not really bothered about what's happening next week. <laughs> but property, you know, we've got a clear plan. Yeah. yeah. You've got goals. We've got goals. I've never had goals ever. <laughs> yeah. Now I've got goals. I can see where we're going, and it's all of a sudden it's almost in within reach. We've got ideas of, of doing some um, like bigger projects, bigger so. projects like more renovations, yeah, uh, conversions, stuff like that. And you've done really well. You've got you've, you've got a lot of experience. You both left your jobs, your full time property. You're financially free now because you you well at least pretty much. Yeah. Um, what's your strongest reason why? To create a better life for <laughs> all our family, like our future family, our children, and yeah, our parents family, as yeah. well. Family. Yeah, and then friends yeah. as well. It's, it'd be nice to be able to like treat treat them to like a holiday or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that they're like your mum and dad, like. I've, I've treated them to a holiday next month. Oh they my goodness! Been on holiday for ages. And so. you can do that because you just made twelve and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Which is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dad, the, 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 they're like not struggling, but they, no, of course they're, not. But, but they're like working and the, it's nice to treat they them. They haven't been on holiday yeah. in how many years? Yeah. Years, and they yeah. haven't been able to go on holiday. So it's like it's just nice to treat. It's just nice to treat yeah. to treat your family when, when your parents brought you up and. and yeah you know, made you who you are, it's nice to just give back and, and treat them to a holiday and things like that. Has the, has the, has property, being in property together, yeah. has it brought you guys closer together? Yeah. Well, I've always been pretty close, but it's yeah. nice to be, um, you yeah, know, working together. Because there was a time when we both worked shifts, so you could go weeks without properly seeing each other. Yeah. Now we get to spend every day together. Not all day, every day. <laughs> That's nice. Sometimes you and yeah. <laughs> and what's, what's the time on the night? What, what's happening in July? We're getting married. Oh, that's so cool. I'm so pleased for you guys. Yeah. What would be your best piece of advice you would give to someone who was just thinking about starting out? Maybe uh, similar to yourselves, no, no background in property, maybe struggling with depression or self-worth or anything, hate their jobs, you hate it. I remember when you said to me, you go, I hate my job. You know, what advice would you give to them? I would say that doing what you are thinking about is the best first step. Yeah. If you're starting to think about it, like we were just doing it and yeah. then like turning up to one of these events that they're on for free, that was yeah, just the first massive. step for us and it was huge. Yeah. It's, it's good that you do it for free as well because then it just gives them that chance to just dip the toe in. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what we were doing. Um, we were dipping our toe in. We even, were having a th think about it. Yeah. But then we just the went all in. Course, <laughs> the crash course. Ooh. Just blow your mind. Yeah. With my friends, just last last week we went on the crash course with my best man. Who's, yeah. Who's obviously the wedding, and um, he's his mind was blown, and yeah. his girlfriend was a bit of a skeptic. Yeah. His fiance no. Yeah. And she that's it changed their mind. So it's just yeah. it's just just like you say with the brain, like people are brainwashed to like what is it a dead job. Look forward, look forward to, to the retirement. Weekend. Yeah, look forward to the weekend. Look forward. Anyway, yeah. So the it just you change people's minds, and it just like brings them to reality of what could be possible. Yeah. If someone goes to the crash course and doesn't have the mind blown, then it's not for them. Yeah. I, I agree, and I mean, watching YouTube videos is dipping your toe in. Going on the crash course is just transformational, and you guys have chose to go on and continue your, your journey, and you're on the academy, which is just great, and I'm, I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm, I'm really pleased to have you as friends as well. So um, thank you ever so much for sharing your story, and uh, I can't wait to see what's next for you guys. So fist pump, you're awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> well guys, if you enjoyed that Winners Wednesday and you would like to be sat here with me also as a success student, then the best, thing, best piece of advice as these guys have said is get yourself booked on a Property Investors Crash Course. Yeah. Link is below, it's on me, on the house. I look forward to seeing you there. My name is Samuel Leeds, thank you for watching Winners on a Wednesday. Every single week we interview our success students for your inspiration. You can watch more right here 
on the playlist. There's a whole playlist of them. But what you'll notice is every single winner on a Wednesday, it always starts with them coming to my two-day crash course. So if you would like to be a winner on a Wednesday, literally come on my crash course, and who knows, in three months' time, you could be here in my offices on this show as a winner on a Wednesday. So get yourself booked on the crash course, watch more, have fun. I'll see you next week.